all that we can gather to gather to what a privilege. Brother Norman was reading about Martania a while ago. Martania is one of the places I'm always fascinated when they occupy themselves and talking about reparation, slavery, all people people who who were not themselves slaves, asking folks who never were slave owners to pay up, pony up. Mauritania is a place where today slavery men and women, boys and girls are sold on the slave block. I wonder sometimes why folks are supposed to sleep not over there protesting and stop it. I know. Last week we looked at blessedness. Women have what Paul described in 2 Timothy 1, 1 to 5, an unhypocritical faith. Timothy's mother, grandmother, Paul identified as women who had an unhypocritical faith, a genuine faith. Today I want us to look forward to that same letter, 2 Timothy 3, 10 to 17. Lord willing, we will re return to 1 Corinthians next Sunday. Today, 2 Timothy 3, 10 to 17, where Paul has something else to say to Timothy about his background, his upbringing, and then challenges him as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, basically reminding him he is in the school of lifelong learning. If you claim to be a follower of Jesus Christ here, you began that journey by grace through faith. You made a conscious, convictional decision or commitment to repent of your sin, trust in Jesus Christ, and trust your life to Him. You began an education. You will not ever. Not when I die. Brothers and sisters, when we die, we're going into the university of mind boggling. So we spend our lives as Christ followers preparing for that, studying to show ourselves approved. That, that meaning there that we have been approved by God. God has said, yes, you're my child. Well, today I want us to look at some things, and I want you to stand with me if you would while I read 2 Timothy 3, 10 to 17. We already read it together. I want to read it and let you follow along. Emphasize this idea of a disciple being in the school, lifelong learning. Look at what he says here. You, however, Timothy, you, however, have followed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions and sufferings that happened to me at Antioch and Iconium, Lystra, which persecutions I endured, yet from them all the Lord rescued. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil people and impostors will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it. And how from childhood you've been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. That the man of God, equipped for every. What have we just read together? Read the inerrant, infallible, all sufficient word. The Lord deeply, increasingly convinced us. Praise of His glory. Thank you. Seated. You may wonder sometimes why, did, why don't we do this? Inerrant, infallible, all sufficient. I was on the phone a couple of days this week. Young man, pastoral, kind of, for a pastor. They brought in a pastor in. And he had to confront this 75-year-old man who stood in the pulpit and told these people factual, historical Bible. 
Never forget. Never doubt. This book we in there, without error, infallible, incapable, all sufficient. How to live life. Go to this textbook. So let's let's look at these together here. I want you to see four things in this passage. First, the disciple must learn about suffering. Second, the disciple must learn to expect suffering. Third, the disciple must learn and continue learning. Finally, the disciple must learn to love his textbook. The disciple must learn about suffering. As Paul says in verses 10 and 11, he says, you, however, you, Timothy, you have followed my teaching. One of the word groupings, we've talked to you this past. When you talk about disciple, you're talking about the word in the, in the Testament that is the word for student. Uh, it's uh, literally in Latin, discipulus. So we don't even translate the word. We just bring it over from Latin, disciple. Word for student. Discipline. We get that to discipline yourself. That study on Sunday night, to discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. One of the words, student, one of the words is imitator. One of the words is follower. Follower. Christ bids a man follow, come and follow me. That word there is a follow to the end word. It's, it's the emphasis of the word. It's emphatic. Follow. You, however, have followed my teaching. Paul would not have given Timothy a plug nickel for being a Christian. He had not followed the teaching that God had given Paul, the doctrine of Christianity. The way, truth, Christianity. You followed my teaching. That was one of the marks of the early church. Acts chapter 2, they all continued steadfast in the apostles' teaching. Paul commends Timothy for this. Followed my teaching, my conduct. Not only, Paul was not one of these guys who said, uh, just don't, work, don't pay attention to what I do, just do what I say. But it was word and life. It was, it was, it was truth and uh, living, Paul. My conduct, my aim in life. Timothy, in being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, mentored by Paul, Paul said, you know my aim in life. He says it in another place. I want to know him. I want to know Jesus Christ. He had this, this magnificent obsession to know Christ. My aim in life, my faith. Paul, Paul had plenty of opportunities to be squeezed. That in this world, you will have tribulation. And, and, the, and the word tribulation, we told you before, is the, is the word that means squeezed. You will be squeezed. You'll be pressed. My patient. The word patient here is not so much about not blowing your stack. The word for, for perseverance, bearing with, bearing under. You know how I have endured my love. One of the hallmarks of Corinthians 13. What love looks like. Here's what love does. Here's what love does. Paul says, you've, you've observed this in me. I don't talk about love and then act hatefully, spitefully. Love, my steadfastness. Thing by the side. Gives gear. Persecution. Now, it's important that Paul manifests these things, right teaching, right conduct, focused aim of life, the glory of God, functional faith, an enduring faith, a loving faith, a steadfast faith. It's important that he shows these things because when you do that, you'll face. We don't know a whole lot about that yet, but it's coming, believe me. Read about the Equality Act. One of the most wicked euphemisms ever attached. Professional. The Equality Act will mean that you and I, every church in America, must surrender. LBG. Hook, line. It means that your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren must endure verse education, that wicked lifestyle. It's coming. Mark it down. It's coming. 
Won't escape it. Believers in Mauritania have. Believers in Nigeria have not. 900 churches have been burned by Boko Haram in Nigeria. They line the Christians up there in, in big, deep pits that they themselves have dug, execute. Tell me. Somebody's told you you're going to escape, but they've lied to you. Paul says, you've been doing my persecutions, suffering. It happened to me, and he lists the places. Timothy was with him at Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, which persecutions I endured from them. At that point in his life, Paul could say, you know, and I've been shipwrecked, snake bit, beaten, stoned, imprisoned. The Lord rescued him every time, but the last time he rescued him, taking him home. We don't suffer persecution in, in that regard necessarily. Well, somebody might insult you. A Christian, they might deprive you of an opportunity. Tell us for the faith. You need to pray for host faith. He's about to enter an environment, a noble environment, training in the U.S. military. Thank you ahead of time for your service. He's going to be in a. We pray for him that God will find him some companions. Prayed for Clifton with companions, fellow believers. God will show. Paul says, "Learn, you be honest with it. These folks out here that are teaching people that we're not going to suffer, they're liars. Doing you no service, me no service. Well, how can you say that? Well, the next verse." Disciple must learn to expect suffering. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Doesn't say some. Some parts of the world, uh, darkened cultures, cultures that are not enlightened. Don't, doesn't say any of that there. All who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus. Why is that important? Because if you've been told that, that, that you can live a brand of Christianity in a place where there'll be no consequences for it, then when consequences come, what are you going to do? So, not only must the disciple learn about suffering, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, German Christian during World War II, Christ bids a man come after him. Come and die. Die to himself first. If anyone wants to come after me, let him deny himself. Die to himself first. Take up his cross daily. And then prepare, prepare to die. While evil people and impostors will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Contrast. You desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus? Prepare. Persecute. Folks, suffering takes many different manifestations. I got to spend some time with my 80 sister. She sort of became the matriarch of the family when my mother died. Brother Tom said, my mom was the central nervous system of our family. She kept everybody in touch with everybody else. Call mom, you're up to date immediately. She died, my sister. 83 years old now. Tia. Our complications with somehow many depression and fracture in the back and needed bypass surgery, being prepared to go to St. Luke. Bypass. Finally got her there and the doctor came and given what There she is. We had a sweet talk yesterday. She is suffering. She said that I never what she means by that is she's a registered nurse we called her through the she was the head nurse got a lot of nurses in our family Karen's a nurse I guess the men in our family are so sickly Al married a nurse 
I married a nurse. I married a nurse. The head nurse. She always called the shot. I don't know. I reminded her, I said, you know, Jesus took Peter and said, Peter, you're going to be led in a way that you don't want to go. Folks, whether someone comes after us with guns, steadies, take our lives from being followers of Christ, or whether, whether life just begins to take its toll, we will be led in. We need to learn to expect suffering. So we have living with hope. Lying in bed, unable to have Fighting through the pain. Showing the hope of the gospel to people from all over the world working that. Very few. that they have no hope. The, the religion they follow, for the most part, is hopeless. Know where you're going. Live with hope. Why? Paul would teach Timothy that, that whatever came his way, desire, live a godly life. In Christ. The Bible does when he's a Loses. Third, the disciple must learn and continue learning. Here's, here's where I think some people miss it. Talk to a fellow. I was on. I think I'm just about ready to retire. Church work. He's. God's retirement plan. So in the time. Paul says to young Timothy, but as for you, continue in what you have learned. We never stop learning. I don't stop learning. I, I love getting up. I love other brothers and sisters and listening to teaching you. It is it is beautiful. Learn, plumb the depths of never exist. Never exist. Continue. Not only continue learning, but continue living. Continue living what you're learning. That's why we need to. So, Karen, for our 45th anniversary coming up, when part of what I'm going to give her is I'm going to give her my commitment to go through a refresher course called Love and Respect. To this day, we will say things about communication. I'll say, ooh, I felt disrespect. Am I being unloving for the communication plan? Felt unloving, was I? Disrespect. Commitment to her. Lifelong learning. I hope one day could being a husband. Giving up. Trying to keep on learning. Paul says, keep doing that. Knowing. From whom you've learned is you've you firmly believed it. Timothy was not a part-time believer. He wasn't one of these guys, convenient Christian. Well, if it if it works out, you can count on me. You know, but I no no. He was all in. In you. There's some people, what would you have thought of these young men and women if when they when they finished elementary school said, Well, that was fun. I'm finished. I graduated from sixth grade. Glad I got that behind me. 
got middle school, we used to call it junior high. Middle school, you got... And even though you've graduated, Matt's going to keep on studying theology through the founder's study. Not. Wherever life takes you, you had to stop learning. Going to class every day. You had to stop learning. Paul expects you, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, to keep on learning. Keep on being firmly convinced of it. Knowing from whom you learned it. Now, he learned it from his mother, his grandmother. Paul comes in in God's providence, speaks the gospel to him. He's converted so that Paul would call him my son in the ministry. Just remember, it's critical. We talked about this last week. Mama and Grandma continued. They wrote a, a wonderful example for Timothy. We do not need more dropout Christians. We do not need more people who claim to be Christian and then act like they've gotten over it or they've moved on beyond it. We need lifelong learners as disciples. Remember, he says, how from a childhood you've been acquainted with sacred writing. Another, another tender thing I thought about. I told you about my mom. Well, here, I, here I was just standing at the bedside of my oldest sister, 83 years old. I knew that from a child she's known the Holy Scripture. And now as a mom, she's taught her, her two sons who, who have been taking turns driving from, from Beaumont to Houston to stay with her. And grandchildren, she has grandchildren. Oh, they're learning. She has great-grandchildren. She has great I said, this is you. This is your legacy. Live for Christ. While you live, don't stop living for him before you die. I don't understand why the Lord doesn't take me home. I said, Well, I don't pretend to understand that. I'm not going to philosophize. Here's what I know when you've touched the last person he intends for you, in a second, go home again. Keep on learning. The Scriptures are able to make you wise concerning salvation. Yes, the Scriptures are the means God uses, the preaching, the teaching of the Word, the means God uses to bring you to faith, saving faith. But they're able to make you wise. You don't stop studying the Scriptures just because you heard the Gospel through the Scriptures. You begin the lifelong task of learning the Scriptures because you'll be wise. We don't want to be unwise Christian. We want to make wise decisions. We want to speak wisdom in our words. We want to have wise thoughts. We want to have wise relationships. Through faith in Christ. And then I'm going to close. We, we've, we talked through 2 Timothy, so I'm not going to... All of the Scripture, God... The word there, theonoustos. Breathe every word. Every word is true. Trust word. There's all the scripture. You've got to love the textbook. Never tire of the textbook. Never think you've exhausted the textbook. I've preached from this book 45 years. And oh, how I want to. How I want to know. How I want it to shape me, transform me, capture my thoughts. Because you see, it's profitable. It's profitable. For instruction. Give themselves to the instruction in for this book. They wonder why, why they don't get any. Reproof it tells us what's right and wrong. It's not my opinion whether somebody's doing right or wrong. The Word of God says that. So you can correct somebody. This young man, this, this young pastoral type, thank God had the, had the tenacity to go to this 75-year-old 
retired pastor, said, do you really tell me that Moses didn't write five books? No, he didn't. He rebuked it. Profitable for correction, for bringing, here's, here's wrong. This is, the scripture says this is right. Line them up. This can't be right. Not everybody's opinion is right. Training. Christ says, how are you training your, your children, parents? How are you helping train your grandchildren? But I'm telling you what, the winds are strange that are blowing now. A boy can be a girl, a girl can be a boy. Change their mind. Doesn't matter. I want a baby, kill it. Waited too late and had it, kill it. Grandma, grandpa getting on your nerves, starve them. This is the day we live in. You're not training your children in righteousness from this book, and the devil is training them to put you away. They grow up. Well, you committed to lifelong learning. Young men and women, we honor today, you committed to lifelong learning. Let me tell you, when I plan to stop studying this book as a fallible, saved by grace sinner, when the Lord takes my last breath away. That was it. The answer for the body is to be present with the Lord. I will enter into the presence of God, and we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is, and we will spend eternity astounded. He unfolds his majesty. The attribute. And as we study with, without bettering, with, without filtering, when in a glorified state, with a glorified mind, with all, all functions firing like Adam had in the garden, and yet better than Adam, to learn all of eternity. That's why the angels can't stop praising him in heaven, because they're continuing to discover him. You and I will be too. Saved by grace through faith. For disciples who said, by God being my, I will never stop. Because Paul said, I want to know. I want to know the power of his resurrection. I don't want to get little glimpses of it. I want to know the power of his resurrection. I want to live with resurrection power. I want to live in such a way that, that the enemies of the cross know they can't kill me. All they can do is help get me to glory. I want to be made, Paul says, conformable to his death. I want to live with the cross as a shadow over my life in such a way, practicing self-denial. Self-denying sacrifice. Ever. That's your plan? That's the plan. That's plan A. No plan B. You. I'm saving you. I'm making you. The other plan? Oma. Dear Holy Father, you're the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we hear. Oh, we hear him. God, I guess the word that grips me today is content. I pray for the these three that we honor today. For students here in this place, they will continue. Dear God, as much or more than that, I pray for those of us who are, who are beyond them in our years, who are farther down the path, that they won't have to look at us and see us falter. They won't have to look at us and see us stop. They will see us. They will set the example. Continuing. Pressing on. Persevering. Enduring, 
disciples, followers, imitators, students. One only Savior of our Lord. Stand together.